In this short video, I'm going to derive the hydrostatic equation. All right, let's consider a fluid element. A fluid element is essentially a chunk of the fluid, and this is the free surface of that fluid. This fluid element is in equilibrium. So the summation of forces on the z direction, and I'm going to consider this direction to be my positive z direction. So the summation of forces on positive z direction is, should be equal to zero because this is in equilibrium. Uh, let's consider all the forces that are acting on this fluid element. So first of all, the obvious one is going to be W, and W is going to be the weight. W is going to be the weight. So W, we know from fluid mechanics fundamentals, that is gamma. Gamma is specific weight of the fluid times volume. And the volume of this cylindrical shape is going to be the area, the cross-sectional area of it, which is delta A, times the height of that, which is delta Z. Okay, so now we have weight. What other forces are acting on this cylindrical chunk of fluid? Um, one would be from here, as a result of the pressure of water on top of the cylindrical shape, we're going to have pressure times um, cross-sectional area. And also, the other one would be right over here, right, in this direction. But which one is larger? We don't know, right? We don't know if this pressure is larger or this pressure. Let's assume that this top one is larger. So it would be if this is P times delta A. And why P times delta A? Because we know that force is equal to pressure times cross-sectional area. So cross-sectional area is delta A, and pressure is P. And let's say that pressure over here is larger than P. Larger than P means P plus delta P times delta A. Okay, so these are all forces acting on this fluid element. Now let's write the equilibrium. Again, in this direction, Z is positive. And we know that the summation of forces in Z direction is going to be equal to zero. Okay, whatever is upward is going to be positive. Whatever is downward is going to be negative. We have P times delta A. It's positive. And we have W negative. And also we have P plus delta P um, times delta A should be equal to zero. Okay. Um, so this will be canceled out with this one. And we can write it like this. Okay, so W, we have it here, is gamma times uh, volume, and volume is here. So it would be... Okay, let's divide both sides of the equation by delta A. And obviously, these are going to cancel each other out. And this is going to be 0. So what we'll have over here OK, let's move delta P to the other side of the equation and rewrite the equation. All right, so this is our hydrostatic equation. Let's take a look at it and see what we can understand from this. This equation is telling me that the changes of pressure is related to the changes of elevation of the fluid. So as the elevation changes, the changes of elevation are correlated with the changes of pressure. Also, this equation is telling me that when I go up in a fluid, pressure decreases. Why do I say that? So when I go up in a fluid, delta Z is positive, right? Remember, the positive direction is up. When I go up, delta Z is positive. So there's a negative sign over here. Pressure decreases as I go up in a fluid. As I go downward in a fluid, delta Z is negative. Negative and negative would be positive. So delta P is positive, meaning that pressure 
increases. In other words, as you go deeper and deeper in a fluid, the pressure is increasing and increasing and increasing, right? It totally makes sense, right? Imagine that you are uh, swimming. As you go deeper and deeper in the swimming pool, you can feel that pressure is getting higher and higher on you, okay? So as you go down in a fluid, uh, uh, pressure increases, and as you go up, pressure decreases. All right, now let's say that we have a container like this. This is the free surface of the fluid, and this is a point over here. Let's call it, okay, let's call it this point on, on the surface of the fluid, point one, and this point, point two. And the distance between these two points, let's call that H. Now, if we want to calculate the pressure from the free surface of that fluid, we can use this equation. So delta P is P2 minus P1 over here is equal to negative gamma, and delta Z is Z2 minus Z1. Okay, so what is the pressure at point one? This is the free surface of the fluid, so pressure is going to be atmospheric, so relative pressure is equal to zero. So on this side, I only have P2. How about here? Z2, depending on where you put the datum, is going to be negative H. Negative H. Why? Because my datum is right over here. So this is Z is equal to zero. So if this is Z equal to zero, H below Z would be negative H. What's the elevation at point one? It's equal to zero. Okay, so if I want to write that, pressure at point two is going to be this negative and this negative would be positive, would be gamma times H. This is another form of, let me actually get rid of this, this is another form of writing the hydrostatic equation. So if you are measuring pressure at a specific point and you are measuring it from the free surface of the water, free surface of the fluid, you can write P is equal to gamma H and H is the depth of that specific point. All right, now let's understand this a little bit better. Let's say that you have a water bottle and that water bottle is empty, so there is no water inside that. You're going to put the cap on and you're going to go swimming and you're going to take that water bottle with you. As we are going down in the water, we are expecting that the pressure is going to be increased, right? If you go down, the pressure is going to increase. So if the water bottle is empty and we are going down in the water, we expect the water bottle to come together, right? Because the pressure outside of it is going to be larger than the pressure inside of the water bottle. I'm going to show you, I'm going to end this video with another video that shows you this experiment. And it shows you how as you go deeper in water, the pressure is getting increased and how it impacts the water bottle. Let's watch that video together. All right, let's talk about an example to make things crystal clear and see how we can use the hydrostatic equation. So in this example, we have a tank, and this tank has a drain pipe and a drain plug. There are two fluids in this tank, fluid number one and fluid number two. And the specific weight of fluid number one has been given to you over here, and the specific weight of fluid number two has been given to you over there, and you have all the dimensions of the tank. What we are going to find is essentially the pressure on this drain plug at point C. So what we are gonna find essentially is pressure or P sub C. We are going to find this value. 
whenever you have problems like this, you want to write the pressure terms at the interfaces. So right now, an interfaces of different fluids. So I have air and fluid number one, and this is the atmospheric pressure. So at this point, I know that pressure at this point is equal to zero. Uh, this is the free surface of the fluid, right? Another interface is going to be right over here, right? And then the final point would be right there. Okay, so I'm gonna start from the top where the pressure is zero. I know that at that interface, at essentially over here, A, pressure is gonna be equal to zero. Okay, plus. And then I'm going, I'm moving downwards, so pressure is going to increase, right? That's why I have the plus sign over here. Um, I know that pressure, let me write it over here. So pressure as we go down is going to be equal to gamma of that fluid times H. So I'm moving from this point, this interface, to this interface. H is going to be this distance, two feet, or I'm going to say H, A, H sub A, B, okay? And gamma is going to be gamma of fluid number one. So to write it for you, this would be gamma of fluid number one times H from A to B. Again, plus... I'm going to move from this interface to the point that I want the pressure for. I'm going down, so I have a plus sign. This time, I'm moving in fluid number two. So this would be gamma of F2 times H from B to C. And this will be equal to the pressure at this point, which is pressure at point C. Okay. Now let's put the numbers in. This is zero, so I don't um, need to consider this. I'm going to write down the numbers. And eventually, if you calculate P sub C with this, it would be 326.7 pound force per cubic feet and that would be your answer the pressure at point C okay so what we learned from this example this problem is that whenever you have a problem statement that gives you multiple fluids as you're moving down in a fluid you need to use the gamma and the H that is appropriate for that specific part from interface to interface